Welcome to Bo Family EV. I hope you'll like and subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. Let's go. We'd like to say that in our opinion, it is not suitable for children or for those of you who may have a nervous disposition. Hey guys, today I thought I'd show some of the differences between Apple CarPlay and Android Auto when it comes to the F-150 Lightning. Now for me, day to day, I use Android Auto and there's a couple reasons for that. I prefer the satellite view that I get here. It's got my traffic patterns on there. I also like how I can pinch down and expand out and rotate the map. This is really helpful when I've got routing and I can see exactly what route it's taking me on. And it'll give me recommendations for maybe a route that's five minutes slower or faster and maybe there's a certain way that I prefer to go. So I really like being able to see that. I also like the way the widgets are laid out here and the sizing of the map versus the widgets. I prefer this much better to Apple CarPlay, which you'll see in a minute has much larger buttons. Uh, here, I can quickly just expand this, uh, shout out to Turn Down for Watt Podcast, and see the podcast and go to different libraries. And then I can switch over to my music, and that will then show me the album art. But I can quickly switch back to this widget view where the predominant view is my uh, navigation, which is really what I want to see. Now, where this doesn't really do as well is going to be when it comes to that navigation, integrating my state of charge. So if I go to navigate, for example, take me to Disneyland. You're going to see Disneyland Park. All right that it's going to come up and give me the option to navigate and that's fine and all but what it doesn't do is it doesn't take into consideration that i'm in an electric vehicle so here you can see it's saying it's a five hour and 47 minute drive that's definitely not the case and even though it says ev charging here it doesn't really uh for one show me any tesla chargers which i know that's coming uh, but even if i were to select um one of these chargers it's not going to integrate it into the maps. So once I hit start, it's going to give me a couple different options of routes to get to Disneyland, but it's not going to incorporate any charging into that route planning. And if you look at the time, it still says five hours and 51 minutes. So it has no idea that I'm going to need to ch stop for charging. And that for me is, is a real problem when it comes to using it for a longer distance route. So here we are with the Apple CarPlay interface and you can see a couple differences right away. Just with the map, I don't have the satellite view that I prefer. I can't really pinch or zoom, but I can move it side to side here. Um, and then I don't really have the ability to rotate like I could with Android Auto. Minor things, not really a big deal, but where I do think that I have a problem with it comes into play with the paneling and the, the widgets. So you can see I can go here to my podcast, uh, shout out once again to turn down for what, and uh, I can do that, but then when I go back to my view, you can see how much room that takes up here on the panels. And so my GPS is really small, I really want it to be bigger, but it does allow me to take and then uh, see my audio settings. I can then go in here and change over to the music. I get the album art like you'd expect, and I can listen to that. And then when I go back again to see the satellite or the navigation view, um, again, this widget is just too big. Now I can click on this and I can see the bigger view, but now I don't have any audio controls. So that's just not really what I prefer. It's a minor thing, personal preference, but I really do enjoy the way Android Auto lays out the display better for me. Now where it does have an improvement over Android Auto is it is integrated with the truck and knows the state of charge, but even there it really falls short when it comes to recommending chargers. It doesn't have the Tesla network, which we already knew, but let me show you what else it does when I navigate. Take me to Disneyland. Getting directions to Disneyland Park. So here you can see it's gonna come up with my route and it's gonna show me my state of charge, which is great, but even though it recommends charging stops. Starting route to Disneyland Park. In about one hour, 37 minutes, you will need to make one stop in Los Banos to charge your vehicle. You should arrive with a 34% battery charge. Head southwest on Bay Road. So you can see that it's got the 34% on arrival state of charge, and that's wonderful, and it's got my charging stops, and that's wonderful that it does that as well, but I know from personal experience that I can make it down to Disneyland in two charging stops if I go to Harris Ranch and then over at Tahone Pass. But here, it's not gonna let me edit this, it doesn't let me change it, and it doesn't let me do anything to alter where it's wanting me to stop. Now, I'm no expert when it comes to Apple CarPlay, so maybe there's something I'm missing here. Please chime in in the comments and let me know 
uh, if there's a way to do this and I'm just not familiar with it. But for me personally, this is an area where it just needs to be better. I like that it's got it integrated, but it's not of any use to me if it's forcing me to stop only where it recommends. So that's kind of an overview of the two. That's why I think neither one are quite getting it correct today. I know there's gonna be updates to come. I'm excited for those, uh, but it, either I'm going without charging stops and without a state of charge, or I have the wrong charging stops. So either way, it's not really the experience I'm looking for. Hopefully better will come. I'm looking forward to that. See you next time.